My rose did not survive winter. What do I do? A question for a desperate beginner rosarian. And the quick answer would be, wait, don't do anything. In our society, when everything which is not serving well is being thrown away right away, the same attitude can be towards a rose. No, wait. And there are two reasons for it. Very often, plants do have this very good uh, mechanism where if the season is very bad, they do go into dormancy and there is life in the plant, which is only in the root system. And very often the plant can take one, the whole one year break and then next year it will start growing. Not that you have to wait one year for your rose to, to show signs of life, but very often the roots of the rose are saved and in spring in several uh, weeks when the weather warms up your rose might start growing again so it might look very dead and very bad on the top still remember that the root system can be there and can live and the rose can start growing again but there is a culprit especially about roses because some roses are grafted and some roses are own roots and this is a big reason why for people who garden in cold areas who has a chance of losing a rose over winter to cold temperatures is much more than in warmer areas it is recommended to go for own root roses why is it because if during the winter if we have a grafted rose and the top uh, stems are killed chances are that the rootstock which is different from the top right grafted rose will start growing and that would be a totally different rose that would be a very probably vigorous rootstock for our area a lot of roses are sold on dr huey rootstock and it's a very sickish uh, rose plagued by black spot it's a red rose and if you suddenly see that your rose is living but suddenly the growing habit is different and the color of the blooms is different knows that your root, rootstock lived in the soil and now um, it is growing and sending its own shoots and producing totally different blooms but if you a lucky fellow who has own root roses uh, that fear of uh, rootstock taking over you don't have it uh, whatever grows on own roots will be the same rose because basically that's what it is it's the same plant and even if that type of rose is killed to the ground even if it starts growing it will be the same rose you introduce to your garden so keep that in mind that's another reason why you have to be patient and wait and see what your rose will produce that season and then when you see that in spring there is no growth you can take it out and plant another delightful rose and promise to yourself that you're going to follow several steps avoid several mistakes which will help your rose to survive cold winters and we're going to walk through those several helpful tips mistake to avoid number one wrong planting depths and we are talking about grafted rose coming into your garden rose which has a different rootstock and a different rose on top and if you're living in warm areas where there is absolutely no freezing conditions present in winter you can plant that graft union uh, to one two inches above the soil level if you live in areas where temperatures can drop below 20 degrees fahrenheit you plant that graft union at the soil level if you live in areas like me where cold temperatures are present in winter you hide that graft union underneath the soil level one two inches and if you go even deeper in colder areas zone five you go three four inches uh, why is that because in your grafted rows that body uh, that graft union is the weakest part of the rose if that thing gets damaged that's it your rose is gone and by the way, there is somewhat a confusion. People sometimes think that own root rose and bare rose has the same meaning. No, your, your rose 
uh, arrives in your garden, can arrive into your garden as potted rose, meaning it is in the pot, or bare root, meaning there's no soil around the roots, uh, the seller saves on shipping, and you are receiving this rose with little roots visible. So that's uh, that level of definition. And then we have grafted rose, where it has a, a graft union present, and own roots, meaning the rose uh, was uh, uh, created with the help of uh, growing on its own roots, basically. It was not grafted. So own roots can arrive into your garden as potted or bare, Grafted rose can arrive into your garden as potted and bare or bare. Uh, so keep that in mind. Another big mistake what people can they make would be the presence of animals. Yes, I know. Deer, voles, rabbits, you name it. Here in US we have a big array of all sorts of animals trying to have a feast on our beautiful roses. And of course, you have to protect your rose. Uh, know that rabbits do damage year-round. If they ate your rose in the fall, doesn't mean that they're not going to avoid your rose in the spring. Mistake number two. You are visiting your favorite Aunt Josie in California, and you live in Connecticut. So you go to the local nursery in California, you fall in love with this majestical, beautiful rose, and you want to bring it home. And you have no idea what rootstock is there or what hardiness zone that rose is good for. Of course, you are in love with your rose and you want that rose to flourish in your garden. Well, chances are that that rose will not. It will be dead that first winter. Why? First, because that rose is not hardy for your area or even if that rose is somewhat at the point of survival in your area, it can be growing on the rootstock if it's grafted rose, which is not suited for cold areas. So don't fall into this mistake where you travel, especially when a zone is so different from yours, and you buy this beautiful thing, you bring it into your garden, you want it to live, and it doesn't. So avoid that frustration. Very often when roses show up in spring at our big box stores, very often label on the roses can be very misleading. And I hear it from rosarians over and over again. People say, oh, the label says that the rose is good to grow to zone six. I live in zone six. I planted that rose and it didn't survive. Well, very often, they, what they forget to state that this rose is good to go, to go in zone six with winter protection. So don't believe the label, do your research, see how hardy that rose is. And very often I, I never go for roses in zone six. I live in zone six, seven, and I never buy a rose good hardy to zone six. I always go further a little bit to zone five. I'm comfortable there. And don't forget to do the winter protection on the rose. Just don't keep your fingers crossed that hopefully we will have mild winters, which we just had, by the way, at least in my area here in Connecticut. And your rose will be fine. Do your homework and do proper rose protection for winter. This way your rose will wake up in spring and you will have beautiful blooms in summer. So bottom line is give your rose time don't start trimming those blackened stems right away because stems in winter do look slightly damaged but then when spring comes uh, the healthy tissue starts to become green and in spring you will be able to see clearly what's living and what's not and then you would be able to do a proper trimming so that's it hopefully your roses survived through the winter all my roses did. I had two Shropshire lead climbing roses planted last year and one of them was attacked twice by rabbits. So since they were young roses, one totally gave up on living. Ooh, the birdies are all over the place. And it's just in the middle of summer, it went into non-existent mode. But I was very patient. I gave that rose all the time, all the protection, good water. And right now I checked on it. And in spring, that root system woke up and started living again. Happy gardening. We will see you again.